Dudes, nothing fancy, part three, talking about my version of the Urban Survival Kit. There's lots of options out there, I'm sure. There's lots of great ideas on how to accomplish the same thing. And what is that thing? Giving you some self-reliance, a peace of mind for you in your urban or city setting if things go bad. You know, terrorist attack, riots cessation of services, all kinds of things that can happen that will turn your world upside down in the urban setting. And maybe having some of these preparation items can save the day for you. And it's fun going over this. I am enjoying myself. It was fun putting it together. It's fun talking about the specifics of the gear, the philosophy associated with each item, kind of like this pepper spray in the background, the kel P3AT, the ammunition choices, all that. But more importantly, it's a peace of mind for me that maybe in some small way, I'm helping you guys, the awesome people around the world, TM peers, be prepared. Not just for you, and I do want you to be prepared and well taken care of and safe, you know, all those good things. But also, when you're prepared, what it does is allows you to be a rescuer, okay? Because you are you have all these things, or maybe some of these things, you're able to render aid to other individuals. Maybe perform search and rescue services if someone's buried in rubble, uh, you know, affect some first aid like I just said. All kinds of things just because you're prepared and you're squared away. Uh, if you're not personally squared away, you are part of the problem in an emergency. Did you catch that? If you're not squared away, you're part of the problem. You're the type of person that has to be rescued by emergency services. They have to render aid to you instead of you being gaining the upper hand in the situation because of your survival mindset, because of your confidence in your system that you've spent some time and money preparing, um, you can render aid. Again, by way of reference, our USK Urban Survival Kit, at least according to me, not in fancy, there's no way it can address every contingency. It's impossible. We'll do our best with the SAWC considerations, um, but we can't do it. Um, what was this? And I ended part two, by the way, moving on to the item by item review. 
uh, with a teaser. What's in here? Well, we'll get to it in just a second. By way of reference though, this is one of those shower caddies that I told you about. This specific one is made by Columbia. You saw it in my level two first aid kit review series. I talked to it. I think it's an ideal container for a level two kit. Um, will you run out of room for a level two? You might. Um, you might use this for a USK, Urban Survival Kit. But as you can see, even though it has some room, you're going to have to choose your items very carefully of what you're going to contain, have contained therein. You're not going to have this type of capability contained in there. You just won't have room for ammunition, a holster, you know, a large size of pepper spray for, you know, pseudo, I don't know, riot control this you're just not going to have it remember firepower versus mobility sawc size and weight considerations you make your calls go with it what's inside this one well lots of cool stuff that we can use to help save ourselves and maybe others first off spring loaded punch for breaking glass if i need to yes i have gloves in there when i do it this is a very inexpensive tool spring loaded great way to shatter glass there's other ways to do it i realize you might have a multi-purpose gas wrench i think they have a hardened steel glass breaker on the back of it you could incorporate that glass breaking capability is very important no this isn't the only way to do it heck you could throw a chair through it as well maybe maybe i mean if it's tempered glass some of that tempered glass if you're in a high-rise building you're trying to extricate yourself that's tough it's really tough uh, don't underestimate how tough glass can be to get through. And I'm not saying this will get through at all, but it's an option. Options are good. That's one of the tools in the Nut and Fancy USK. Cost, I don't know, three bucks, four bucks. Cheap, cheap, cheap. What's in on this side? The ubiquitous WD-40. Why WD-40? Well, I gotta be honest. Some of the things I just have a hunch you're gonna wish you had with you. This is one of those things. Uh, it does dovetail in one of the tools that I have. And I want to tell you that here in a second. We'll put it aside for now. Uh, batteries, two AA, put in an X, uh, a larger size Ziploc freezer bag. Why two AA? Because it go they go to that Streamlight Stylish Pro. I really should make these lithium. Those are the alkaline, which I said not to use. That's all I had. I don't have AAA lithium with me on today, but I put these in to represent Whatever battery powered device you have, you better have some backup batteries for it. Hearing protection. I didn't really put these in a plastic bag. Normally I do, so they are consolidated. Hearing protection, there's gonna be a lot of loud sounds. Protect your ears. This is one way. These are just uh, you know soft foam ear pieces, and here's a little higher tech way. You can see the price on there. Peltor. Haven't used these a lot. I used them years ago. I wasn't super happy, so I can't really vouch for their effectiveness. But the olive ends inserted, it's passive protection. You put the yellow in, like it says right here, and it's for high noises. It's supposed to shut off. Eh, I don't know. Uh, pretty compact, relatively affordable, backed up with some foam ear uh, types. These are my favorite, these sound guards. They just fit my ear better. Um, yeah, have those in there too. Kind of gets to that hygiene protection. Here's rubber bands. Oh, you know what I forgot to put in here is uh, surgical tubing too. It might be in my level one too. Talk to that here in a second. Rubber bands coming in handy. Huh, what's this? Dedicated wire snips? That's right. Again, this is capability. Okay, I think it's important enough to have. I do have a Leatherman here. I'll tell you the model here in a second. But it's important to me to have a dedicated wire slash whatever cutting capability. And these are inexpensive. Yeah, Chinese made. They're nothing special. Five bucks? Remember I told you I wasn't super concerned with weight in my USK? This is a good representation of exactly what I'm talking about. I would never backpack with this. But I'm in an urban setting. I'm not going to be hiking, at least uh, I'm not planning to hike with this for a long distance. Maybe if something kicks off, I will end up doing so as I get the heck out of Dodge. That could happen, but this is important. Cutting wire, uh, zip ties, which I have in my tool selection here worth the extra weight. Very affordable too. Speaking of zip ties, on this zipper portion of the shower valet, which is now my toolkit, wire. Thick wire, I can affect repairs on all kinds of things with this. Good to have. It's one of those hunch items. I just have a hunch you're gonna be glad you had it. Might be MacGyver-esque in nature. All kinds of zip ties in here, okay? That variety, I have some super long ones. Again, those snips, are a great way to uh, you know 
manage those zip ties. What would I use zip ties for? Again, it's hard to say exactly all kinds of things. Bundling stuff together, repairing stuff. You might be stuck in a certain situation or room setting where you'd want to, I don't know, put stuff together. It's another hunch item. I have a hunch you're going to really be glad you had them. And they're lightweight and compact. Hardly take up any room at all, as you can see. Uh, better question is, why not have them? Oh, here we go. Urban Survival Kit. Portable hacksaw blade. Okay, that is a cool item to have. That's right, I wouldn't take this in the woods with me. For my Urban Survival Kit, I would. I've used some Gorilla Tape to tape it up. If I don't, it's gonna shred my tool case in there. Uh, this one has been in the family for a long time. I've used it a lot with shop projects. Uh, Walmart, I went and checked this one out for you guys. Here's an updated version. It's called a Mini Hack, made by Stanley. A little thicker, see that? Supposedly more ergonomic, easier to use. All this is, dudes, if you don't know and if you haven't used one, it's just a hacksaw blade and a handle. Lightweight and it works. Why include that in your urban survival kit? In case you have to cut through something. You know, maybe to rescue yourself, you're stuck under rubble or something and you gotta cut through some metal. Maybe it's a lock or something. And this gets back, huh, see how this all ties in? To the WD-40. Because with this, I can cut through metal effectively. Yes, I know some multi-tools have that mini, uh, that little tiny hacksaw blade capability. This blows it away for less. What was this? Four bucks? Four bucks. Maybe five bucks? Cheap, cheap, cheap. You might have an extra hacksaw blade on yourself too. I went with this one here because it's slimmer. You know, comp more compactable. Hacksaw blade. Nice to have. Going to get to Leatherman here in a second. Oh, principle of redundancy in operation again. I have this. It's a driver. It's a fiberglass screwdriver. I've had this one for years. Lots of wear and tear on it. These weigh next to nothing, and it is a dedicated driver. I've put a long shank Phillips in there. You have some flat blades in there. There's a miniature Phillips in there. There's a small flat blade. Why do you have this, nothing fancy? You said you had a Leatherman principle of redundancy. You're not going to be the only guy that may have to take things apart, take a grate off or something. Wouldn't it be nice to throw this to your rescuer buddy who's with you but not prepared and say, here dude, here's your driver. Go ahead and take that grate off there so we can escape. I don't know. Myriad and myriad of examples. Let me see, what else do I have? I have an upgraded version of this. So This brand is no longer available but it's been bought out apparently by Stanley. And again, this is affordable, $4, Walmart. Same exact fiberglass screwdriver, see that? Love these, by the way. I use them in the shop. They're lightweight. I think the idea with behind them is they don't transmit you know, ele electricity, but I think they're a very awesome survival kit addition. This one has the advantage of having chrome-plated you know, inserts on it, which is a little bit more rust resistant. If you look at the patent number, it's exactly the same as the other one I just showed you. Dedicated driver will come in handy, trust me. I've used it a lot in other projects. Here's those spare batteries moving right along. Lots to discuss, man. Double uh, A variety, I have eight of them in here. Another reason I like uh, lithium, notice I, I date them, by the way, I didn't do it with this one because I thought I was gonna use them on a camp. 10-8, uh, they last a long time, like 10 years, but they're lightweight. That's another big advantage to the lithium battery um, equation. They, they're lightweight, they last forever, they last longer as they brag about right there. Only use lithium. Yeah, I know I need to upgrade those other ones. Uh, and I have eight of them. Is that enough? Probably not. I could probably put four more in there to have it really covered. Why? Because I have those uh, talk about radios, right? Those are high drain devices. They go through them. Remember, I don't can't comp uh, count on electricity, a recharge capability. Plus if I did, I'd have to take the rechargers with these. Extra weight violating SAWC. Get it? What? You have a Leatherman and a knife and you bring a utility cutter? Yes, I do. Remember, weight is not a primary consideration for my um, urban survival kit. And I might have to cut a lot of stuff. You know, this one's been used. It's not super sharp. It's that bimetal blade that I showed you before. And this is that Stanley cutter. I think I have a separate video out on it. Have had it for a long time. This is, by the way, not Dura-coated. That is that Aluma coat two by Brownells, and it's been okay. Pretty tough, actually. A lot easier in dirt coat to apply. A little bit wear and tear there. Um, why have that, though? Guarantees a sharp blade. I can open up the handle, replace them easily, 
and it's, uh, you know, I don't have a sharpener with me in this situation because I am planning not to be out there for an extended period of time with the urban situation. Okay, and you might be cutting through a lot of material, a lot of fabric, maybe a lot of rope. This costs next to nothing, $1.88 at Walmart. That's right, $1.88. It does add a little bit of weight, though. It's part of that 23 pounds. If you don't need it, pitch it. It is redundant in nature, meaning there's other ways to accomplish the same thing. Digging in, electrical tape. Why electrical tape? Because it has certain properties I like. It stretches, it seals off, it waterproofs. I might have to do electrical repair out there. Don't know. And other things as well. I just love the nature of electrical tape. Um, it's light enough and compact enough for this situation, for this POU, I'm bringing it along. Fire kit, you've seen this before. Also in one of those cool zip pouches, very affordable. This is a nut and fancy fire kit. I've shown it to you several times. There's a lighter, have one with an adjustable flame. Okay, no, it's, well actually it is my primary way to make fire, but if it fails, I also have a flint and steel backup that we talked about. I've shown you in several fire making clinics like the Southeaster fire making bid I did like a year and a half ago. Awesome. Here's that light my fire, flint and steel. I think we use that in high skies as well. Great options with two trioxane bars too. Talk, speaking of rock and roll, that's how to get a fire going. Do you need a fire capability in an urban environment? Absolutely, have the capability. You can see it's relatively lightweight and compact. You've got to have that capability. You might be stuck somewhere. You might be in a wood si situation. It's not all cities out there. You may have, uh, you know, egressed or got away into a place like a park that's not inhabited. You need warmth. You need, you know, the the morale building nature of a fire. Have that capability with you. Fire kit. Yes, in the USK. This is a mini driver. Redundant, I know, but this is a very small driver. This was all of like $2.50 at Walmart. And this has perhaps capability your Leatherman doesn't, remember? A little bit of extra driving capability. Well, nothing fancy, how do you know you're gonna need that? My question to you is how do you know you're not gonna need it? It weighs all of one ounce, actually 0.8 ounces for less than $3, totally fits. Yeah, it's coming with, coming with. Probably a lot of things that fall in that category. Here we go. This is uh, organizational, not necessarily for just waterproofing, but if, you know, if it can waterproof, I'll take it. Freezer bag, open it up, Gorilla duct tape. Wrapped on a credit card, the best duct tape out there. I think I said as much in some other videos. Have it with you, and I have that electrical tape with me as well. That's two tapes I have in my Urban Survival Kit, and then if you add my Level 1 First Aid Kit tape, that's actually three tapes I have with me. A few extra alcohol swabs for disinfecting, cleaning stuff, you know, getting gunk out, thrown separately from the first aid kit. Understand that, they're not part of the first aid. This is not first aid here. And then I have some playing cards. You might be stuck. How about some entertainment? Little miniature playing cards. Is that a luxury? Absolutely, don't need that. Get rid of it if it's, you know, SAWC is really paramount for your situation. Oh, more principle of redundancy in action. Scissors, that's right. Actually, I'll tell you now, the Leatherman I have in this kit is a Super Tool 300 and it is scissor list. But with this, and these are some miniature Gerber scissors, which cost all of $3. Again, everything I'm showing you is pretty affordable, included in the Urban Survival Kit with some fluorescent string tied to it so I can identify it since it's black on black in the tool kit. Good to have, um, especially since I might have to cut it into pants legs to treat a compound fracture. Other stuff. Granted, in this situation, this USK, I do not have my level two kit. So I am first day challenged. But a couple things, I'll stretch into level two territory, kind of like these scissors. No, they're not super awesome scissors, but I can guarantee you this, they blow away any multi-tool scissors that you'd ever have. They're much more, you know, capable. Thermocomp, EMS variety, temperature and compass. I would like to have a compass in an urban situation. Yeah, I know the steel girders and all that can throw it off. Um, but I just don't know what your situation is, but it'd be nice to know directionally where you're going. Again, remember 9-11, dusty, no one could tell where they were. They didn't, it was so thick they couldn't even see. I mean, it may stay that way for a long time, who knows? And if you're trying to go a certain direction, wouldn't that be nice to have a compass? I think it would. Capabilities, and it weighs next to nothing. That's next to nothing. Cool, here's my work gloves, and this is a good time to roll into another capability. Slash repelling gloves. What? Repelling gloves? 
That's right, repelling gloves. And these are actually dedicated Petzl tactical, or I won't say that word, ta they're just repelling gloves. Double leather palms and fingers, also doubling as work gloves. Remember that glass breaker I talked about? This is what I'd wear if I was using the glass breaker. Remember also, in my foundational opening of this video, I told you dudes that you can pre-position stuff. Situation. You work in a high rise. By virtue of where you've chosen to work, or maybe that's the job you ended up with, you are in a higher risk environment. Okay, is there a way you can bail out of that environment to safety, a la 9-11? Okay, first off, uh, and this gets into this philosophy and more importantly, the survival mindset. You know what I would have liked to have seen in 9-11? Uh, when those poor people were trapped up in those buildings, I would have loved to seen some dude come bailing out of that window, base jumping. What? Base jumping? Nothing fancy or crazy. Oh, really? Guys do it all the time. They bail off buildings in half for many years, and they do it safely and successfully, and they float safely down to earth, and I think it would have been just outstanding had they done that in 9-11. Can you imagine the person, how they would have been lauded as a hero had they bailed out of one of those buildings of the Twin Towers and parachuted to safety instead of getting burned or crushed to death? You talk about a survival mindset, totally doable. Um, I'm gonna dovetail this clip together because I'm running out of SD card. Hang on, we'll pick it up. So base jumping, are you kidding me, nothing fancy? Totally not kidding you, totally not. You know, if I, li if I lived and worked 60 stories up, I would guarantee you, <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous, but I would guarantee you I would have a parachute in my office and I would be proficient in its use. Uh, but not fancy, parachuting is dangerous. You know what's dangerous is living and working in a 60 story building and you're at the top. That's dangerous. Out of the range of fire rescue crews, they can't get a ladder up that high. You know, so what are you relying on? You're relying on the building's safety you know, to rescue you. I think it would be a lot cooler, to, you know, and I've parachuted before, by the way, not base jump, but parachuted. It would be better to get skillful at that. There's a lot of things that require mastery. Firearms is one of them. We tend to do that. Why not get good at base jumping? Uh, yeah, it comes with, I mean, maybe not base jumping, but parachuting at least, I think it would be awesome. If I lived up 60 stories, I'd totally have that. People are maybe laughing, going, that's ridiculous. Well, tell that to the people who died in 9 11. How ridiculous is that? You know, all the thousands of people that died in those Twin Towers. You know, you're responsible for yourself. You can to expect that emergency services are going to come to you and, you know, save the day on their white horse. Um, it may not happen. It did not happen for those poor people in 9 11. Okay, we're driving to the heart of the philosophy of my urban survival kit and the whole philosophy behind it. Have a survivor's mindset. Take steps to ensure your survival. If you can help others along the way, absolutely. You know, if you're 70, 90 stories up, dudes, crying out loud. You know, think about your options. I mean, guys do it all the time. Yeah, it's a rush, it's fun, but in that situation, it could very well save your life. You could pre. Don't laugh, but you could pre-position your chute in your office, and all you would have to do is make a runway to clear. But nothing fancy. There's wind currents and all these other things that could be attendant in your death. Listen, you know, and I'm talking about something really drastic. You know, 9/11ish. You're up there and doesn't look like. And by the way, it wasn't just 9/11. There's been lots of examples of high-rise buildings where people have burned to death that fire crews were not able to get to. Look them up on Google, okay? I'm talking about that. And you make a judgment call as an individual, as a thinking person and go, you know what? It looks like I'm gonna die today. Uh, I'm punching, now you go. And you know, can you imagine seeing that on the news? Some dude parachutes to safety and he's the only survivor on those upper stories. It'd be a sad story, but at least someone survived. Someone survived. Now, reality check. Doing that is a whole different skill set. Like I said, it's tough, it's difficult, it's gonna involve a lot of cost, 
and uh, it's that. You know, would everybody do that? No. Getting back to the gloves. Okay, maybe just maybe you're within range of repelling to the ground from your high rise. Again, some guys laugh. Go, oh, for crying out loud, <laughs> dudes! I'm totally serious. I've repelled for years. I've been repelling since the 1980s. Okay. No, you're not going to have an effective way to get out of a building in your USK. SAWC, man. There's just no way you're going to fit it. Preposition it. Just like I talked about. That's why I was saying that foundationally. And repelling gear would be one of those things you could preposition in your office. This is a set of repelling gear I've had since the 1980s. Used it a lot. Affordable US Army 120 foot Hank repelling rope in a bag which is quick deployable. All you have to do to deploy it is zip this like that, fix that, and that's a very important point, is putting it on an area that will not pull out. It's absolutely safe. This is all stuff that you would have thought through already. Anchor it, and you will have roughly, roughly 120 foot repel capability. Okay, a lot of things come into play. Repelling can be dangerous. You could kill yourself quickly doing a repel that's rushed or incorrect. Yeah, no kidding. Getting back to life. A lot of things are dangerous. Be good at it. Practice it. I do. You know, I feel pretty confident in my repelling capabilities. Um, you'd have to practice it. Be good at it. And also, another capability, uh, another consideration, well, maybe rescue crews can get up 120 feet. You know, it depends on what city you're at. Sure. Sure enough. But maybe not. Maybe they can't get there in time. That's a judgment call. Life is full of them. Nice to have capabilities. Freaking repel. Can you imagine that? Some dude comes repelling out there like die hard, repels to safety. How awesome would that be? Awesome. Along with this system, and I sewed these to the side of this bag. This is not a dedicated rope bag. This is just a, um, a Black Hawk from the 1980s. Actually, this is Eagle Industries bag, storage bag that I turned into a rope bag like this. Locking carabiners, and I have that other one on the outside of the USK. Remember that? There's my Rescue 8 with ears, which I like repelling with. Definitely, I sewed this on to hold it all. Prepositioned. Works great. Okay, uh, and affordable too. Along with that, a repelling seat. Yeah, you could tie a Australian harness, you know, whatever you want. I like a dedicated seat. This is one I've repelled with years, for years. I'm very familiar with it. I can sit, uh, you know, suit it up and I know guys saying dude you got to do some repelling videos I will I'll get around to them we'll do them we'll do some of that that's part of the nut and fancy adventure and it's a skill set I think it like in this situation urban survival that can really play out I know some guys will laugh and go oh there's no way well you know say what you want to say um, but you know survivor mindset dudes all I got to say is I got it you know whatever I hope you do too uh, you could go with other ropes as well. You don't have to use that one. You know, where'd it go? I had a on loan. This is a nicer rope. This is a blue water static line rope, but it's going to be more expensive and it's in a dedicated Black Hawk rope bag. This is a nice rope. But for what you're going to use it for, unless you're doing it all the time, remember principle of write-off, we preposition it and we forget about it and then we'll have another repelling rope to practice with. That's what I recommend. Um, this might be a good practice rope because it's higher quality than that U.S. Army repelling rope. This is a Kern Mantle static line. Static line means it doesn't have a lot of elongation, certain percentage, so it's made for repelling in a dedicated Black Hawk throw bag. And that's important, dudes, because you're going to throw this to the ground. You can't put it up in a hank or a coil. It's probably just going to get toasted. But if you you know, go back and forth, snake it back and forth like I've done in these bags. You tie this and anchor it securely. That's a very important part <laughs> of you not dying doing this. Uh, yeah, you can do that. And by the way, I want to really stress that. This is serious, serious stuff we're talking about. This is a skill set you have to master. It's not to be taken lightly. Repelling, okay? And you'd have to get proper instruction from lots of different sources where you want to get that. Practice it. But yeah, in a high-rise building, Fire crews can't get to you. Huh. Gloves come in handy. Repelling rope goes out the window. I bust my window, clean it out with a, a chair, put some towels and crap over there. I'm done. I'm out. Out I come. Survive, baby. Survive. Yeah, survival mindset. That Gloves serve that purpose too. Would I always do that? Reality check? No. Not always. It just depends. 
just depends. So actually, I want to stay put and see if fire crews can get to me. But, you know, like I said before, they may not be able to get there in time or it may be so catastrophic your building may not survive. I don't know. So many variables. Hey, there's that Super Tool 300 moving on in the item review. Just reviewed that. You'll see an annotation. What a great multi-tool that is. Heavier duty. Redundant, yet yeah, has a wire cap uh, cutting capability, but it's interior to the plier head, right? And the advantage of having this one is that I can really get in there. This cutting starts right here. I may not be able to get these cutting surfaces deep enough to my cutting chore. Uh, redundancy, there's that principle again from Nut and Fancy. All the tool sets I talked about in the review, you can look it up and decent. Heavier duty since weight and size in this particular POU are not paramount, right? So I don't mind having the extra firepower and that really awesome sheath, by the way, of the Leatherman Super Tool 300. You could roll in a lot of different other multi-tools here. Uh, previous reviewed also, the Leatherman Blast. Not as heavy duty, the plier head, not as heavy duty. Lighter weight, more compact. That might be a good option if you're really striving due to SAWC to keep the size down, okay? Just a thought. Multi-tool is kind of foundational into tool set. I don't carry both these, by the way. You know that. I'm just showing you different variations that you can use. On this side, did we empty that out? Oh, no, we didn't. What the heck? Nothing fancy. What do you have that for? That is a Stanley pry bar. Okay? And this is affordable, first off, just like most of the things I'm showing you. About $6 at Walmart. Why this? Because you might have to pry open doors, you might have to break glass that this can't break, and this has that, and by the way, I have these taped over so they don't abrade and wear the carry case out. That's what it looks like. Could function as an impact weapon if it had to. Heaven forbid, we don't wanna to have to do that, but it could. You know, it's heavy enough, compact enough that it will fit in our system. I can pry open an elevator door with it, pry open a hatch, uh, maybe bust a lock to get the heck out of the place where I'm stuck. Urban survival, either you're committed to the concept or you're not. If you're not committed to it, then you probably wouldn't be watching this video. And why bother? I mean, just be a sheeple. You hope that emergency services get to you. Good luck. You know, or you can take charge of your own existence, your own life, and start doing things. You know, look at that end. You know, pry and open a door. You know, perhaps busting a lock off. Let me show you some other options for a pry bar in your uh, USK. If that's too big, too heavy, you might go with a little thing called, where is it? This one. This is a miniature wonder bar. Wunderbar, wunderbar too. German guys, a rock. Check this out. Taped up so it wouldn't abrade it. And this has the same functionality, but not as much mass. This is a Wonder Bar 2, $3.50 or something like that. It's just insanely cheap at Walmart, maybe four bucks, four fifty. And it is a pry bar that we can open up windows. There might be a, a window that's locked in our urban setting that we need to pry open because they have some type of uh, you know lock or jam mechanism on there so people can't exit the window. There's another prying capability. This is a lot lighter. Some of the weight of that 23 pounds is a steel right here, dudes. Okay, I can need a cruise. I want to finish this in this part. Um, so have that in another bigger alternative. And this is just from my tool chest. Where did it go? In Santa's bag of tricks. This is a bigger pry bar um, serving the same capability, but more capabilities because it has a longer shaft and therefore it would have more leverage in prying the door, the window, the elevator opening up. Uh, this would be another option. Doesn't fit in this though. Okay, you'd have to have it separately and it's bigger, adds more weight. I struck a balance between all the three that I've shown you, went with the little Stanley one. Okay, the little pry bar that it's showing. And let me see if I have the tag to that in case you guys, I'll look here. Eh, I don't know where the tag is. It's it's just that. And it doesn't have to be this one. It could be just something like it. You'll see it at hardware stores and no Walmarts. So not the only place to get it. But I think it's critical to have something like this. Uh, your multi-tool is not going to do it. Your knife, which I'm going to show you here in a second, probably not going to do it. You need something like this. A lot of leverage. You can really crank down, bust stuff, clear a glass window out. Remember I was talking about the repelling situation. How would I clear all that glass out? With my gloves, with my safety glasses, this right here. Next thing I know, I got a smooth ledge for repelling off of, bam. By the way, here's the tag to this carry case. It's a toiletry valet 
uh, Columbia, and I bought it from Campmore.com, eight dollars on clearance. Told you it's cheap, eight dollars. Watch the sales. You can find a lot of things like this. Pressing on. Did I finish this side? Yep, nothing in there. On to this side. I've got a couple cheesy, very inexpensive, on sale for 78 cents a piece, emergency ponchos. Why? You just might need them. I don't have any clothing items here. It's just uh, S-A-W-C, what more can I say? Uh, and don't expect these to be tough. These are really cheesy plastic. They're gonna rip easily, but they could prevent you from getting hyperthermic if the sprinkler systems come on and stay on and you're just getting drenched. Emergency poncho. Maybe tying into the emergency bivy. These two things go together. It is some type of way to waterproof it, and you might not use it for shelter at all. You might use the plastic for something entirely different, you know, depending on what it is. And they're thin, they're lightweight, easy to carry, and they're very affordable. Why not throw them in? Here comes another organization pouch in another plastic bag. This really should go in communications because that's what it's for. In 9-11, a lot of people had problems getting in touch with each other, leaving messages. People were scattered all over the place. In an urban setting, expect that to happen again. Um, have a way to leave messages. A post-it note pad, full thickness, brand new, that you can use, stick everywhere, leave messages. This is where I'm at. Here's my cell phone. It is working. Or, hearkening back to the talk about, this is the frequency I'm on. You tell the rescuers, I'm on this frequency, I'm affecting rescue at this building and this address. I write it down with my Sharpie marker and I put those post-its in, post in five different locations and on I go about my business. Next thing you know, someone chimes in on your frequency. Hey dude, we got your message, where are you? See how that works? Everything ties together, communications. And this is ROL type situation, of course. Couple writing pins as well. Those are cards you could use write on rain, waterproof paper. That would probably be the better choice. These are just index cards right here. On the inside, we have those blue shop towels. I have as many as my system can take. These are gonna be very much used and appreciated by you. Also, some heavy duty tin foil back there. Why tin foil? It's just a hunch item. I have a hunch you're gonna be glad you have it. You could affect a repair on, I don't know, a pipe or something with it, maybe build your fire on it. In certain situations, you don't have a good platform. There's some tissue, just Kleenex. Also one of those convenience hygiene items you'll be so glad you had. And also I took the effort to show you this. I mentioned those shop towels all the time. They're Scott shop towels available in lots, at least in the United States, a lot of the hardware stores. Awesome. They're much more durable, more absorbent, more everything than a regular paper towel. So highly recommend it. I take them on my adventures out in the woods all the time and so glad I have them. They're good for applying WD-40 oils and stuff. I use them in gun cleaning. Yeah, they're that tough. Good to have. So there you have it. That's what's in that pouch right there. Oh, and on we come to the level one first aid kit a la Nut and Fancy style. Previously reviewed in the Nut and Fancy project. And there, like I was telling you, I've got some suturing capability. Uh, I think I have that. I've, I'm just improving my capabilities as I go along. And I have several of these level ones. Right off concept, you would dedicate one to the USK. There it stays forever. With occasional updates like I talked about in the review video on the items that will expire, maybe the medicines, uh, liquids if they expire, you're just gonna have to break in there once in a while and take care of it. I'm not gonna dig into this thing because I have a whole separate video talking about the philosophy, POU, construction concept, list of the ingredients that I, nothing fancy, put in my level one first aid kits. And thanks, by the way, to all the feedback I've gotten over the last uh, year or so, lots of guys contact me saying thank you for the level one first aid kit. It sure helped me in my own preparedness and that's why, again, this is fun for me. Because in some small way maybe, I'm connecting with great dudes all over the world that are better prepared, better situated than they would have been buying some garbage off the shelf item that it has no capabilities. As you can see from this USK, this has capabilities. It takes some effort to put together. It'll take a little bit of money, maybe a lot of money, depending on what you put in it. But you're gonna have a nice feeling. You're gonna feel like you have some capabilities. Redundancy. There's that miniature adventure medical kits. Bivy bag. Remember I had the bigger one? This is a smaller one. Maybe I would put one inside of another, another if it's a very cold situation. Okay, and treating shock. 
for an individual. It might be good to have two. Why two? This is so compact and so lightweight. I had a little bit of airspace left over. This isn't heavy. Jam two. Okay, your redundancy items may vary. Just like I said in the beginning, you may choose to have different things. Okay, you may say, well, I don't need two bivy bags. You know, I don't need a separate set of wire cutters. I'm just going to go with my multi-tool. Fine. And like I said, this might just be a springboard for, to, for you to jog and really thoughtfully consider your own needs and adapt accordingly. But do adapt, do prepare, do have one if your situation requires it. There's some disposable gloves, nitrile variety, and some guys say, well, you need to use these gloves. They're a lot better. You know what? I've Duracoated with these ones. These are just ones I bought from Harbor Freight, and they're very good. They last under the chemicals. I've got like four pair in there. Uh, no, they're not sterile, but I could easily sterilize that with, huh, my alcohol swabs I had, additional to the level one first aid kit. Huh, again, see how it all ties in together? Uh, if I'm treating all kinds of emergencies, bloody things, yeah, I'm definitely putting these on. Chemicals, if I have to protect my hands from it, you know, maybe there's a gas leak. I don't know. There's all kinds of things that can happen in a city setting. I don't want to get my hands on have these with. I have a couple pair of my level one first aid kit too, as much as room will allow, which isn't a lot. Sunblock, have it with you. Chances are you're probably going to be out in the sun for a long time. Do you need a size like this? Absolutely not. Have something with you though. Preferably a good SPF. This is like SPF 45. I kind of wish it was like 75, but have that sunblock. Uh, generally in a survival situation, you're going to be outside a lot uh, till you can get rescued, I guess. Costco wipes, antibacterial wipes, awesome. You guys are like, what are you talking about? And I don't even think they make these anymore. I went to Costco lately, I didn't see them. These are Kirtland Signature brand scrubbing household service wipes. Kill all kinds of cooties, and it is a great way to clean your hands, disinfect your hands, maybe disinfect a wound site. The scrubbing household means, it means they have kind of a rough textured surface. I hope Costco hasn't quit making these. I don't see them in there anymore. Uh, it really sucks. They came in a three pack. Like one would be scrubbing, the other one are just regular household surface wipes. They're all good. They're absolutely the best wipes I've seen. Why? Because they're big enough. I'm not going to pull one out. Well, maybe I will. Out of here. This is why. See how big they are? That is a good wipe. And this size ha has some texture. <laughs> I cover all the details, don't I? And it's wet enough. It doesn't dry out easily like some of those cheesy wipes. This is really a juicy germ killing wipe that works. Have some in your urban survival kit. As many as your space and weight can allow. I'm not even kidding you. And you can see how I stored them. By the way, I was going to mention this. And a lot of guys ask me, nothing fancy in your level one first aid kit, you talked about the NSN number on this Mylar bag. Where do I get those? I've emailed a lot of you guys in private communications. They don't make it anymore. Sorry. I got these in a case lot a couple years ago. They still make that same NSN number. If you do a Google search on that, what you're going to find are these bags, but they're like polyurethane or some type of plastic. They're not the tough Mylar. So apologies, they're just not out there. This is probably the best plastic bag in the world right here that I've ever found. This is a document pouch, very thick Mylar. Sadly discontinued, and now the innocent is the plastic version. I know, it sucks. What do I have? Remember I told you guys, have some Gatorade powder with you. You have a way to mix it in here, uh, replacing electrolytes, especially if someone's dehydrated, they're in shock, that might be a good way to treat it. I also bring salt, and I think I said that in my extended stay uh, backpacking series of vids, to bring someone back that's fainting, that hasn't been hydrated properly. One of these little salt packs, just from a restaurant, these are like Wendy's salt packs, they work awesome, awesome. And they're cheap, cheap, cheap. There you have it, that was in there. Primarily tools like you saw, the multi-tools, the pry bar, the cutters, couple emergency ponchos, and that other stuff. What else do we have here? And dudes, we're coming to the end. Yeah, Whew, man, that's a lot of work. Oh, Quartermaster SP17 from Ontario Knives. This is called the Quartermaster, stupidly discontinued by them. Sorry, but I just call it like I see it. Great 1095 steel blade. Do I need one in an urban survival kit? Probably not. Probably not. It's good to have, and I have it in there for utility purposes. A secondary pry tool. Remember that redundancy thing? There we have it again. 
cutting tool. Yeah, I have the other knife, but I want a heavy duty cutting tool and prying tool and you know maybe you know a pierce cutting tool um, all around I think a quartermaster is a good blade there's a lot of other good ones reviewed in the nut and fancy project that you've seen maybe a cold steel SRK fallen even a one albeit that's kind of a more brittle blade I like the 1095 because it's more durable more resilient to breakage um, good knife to have affordable affordable knife and they're still out there. I think Knives Plus during uh, at least when I was filming this January 2010 had some. You may find them on secondary markets too. For what you pay for a Quartermaster and yeah I still have to do the tabletop review on this. Once I do it I'll probably come back to this vid and annotate it. Um, great knife though. Great knife. Good, good wood sp splitting capability. That's another reason I have it. You know in case I do end up in the woods with my USK my fire kit comes in handy. Uh, no, I don't have a saw in here. It's not that important, but I like a knife for fire making preparation, among the other things I said. Whew, man, this is a lot of work. It is fun, but it is mind-boggling, the details and information I have to share with you uh, with the Urban Survival Kit. I think that's it. I think that's it. We went through everything. I talked about communications. I talked about the first aid capability, you know, some hygiene items, uh, egress capabilities and repelling. Yes, even base jumping. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. Totally, totally would do that. If any of you guys are in high rises, I hope, I pray that you get good at parachuting and keep one with you. Uh, I think it would just make the world stand up and cheer if someone base jumped out of a burning building that was otherwise going to die an awful and painful and horrible death. I kid you not. Talked about those flares, the singling capabilities in the kit, um, tool capabilities, and there's a lot of them. The pry bar, the you know the weaponry, uh, and like we said, we're not the cavalry dudes. We're not trying to save the day. We're trying to survive. We're trying to live through a very bad situation and help other people do so at the same time. Uh, and that's what it can be. Uh, if guys, you know, you live in a uh, city that doesn't allow like this, maybe doesn't allow the pepper spray, then it, like I said, the legalities are you yours to learn about and to obey. That's your choice. Um, binoculars, probably a little bit extra, like I said. And your carry case, up to you too. Uh, remember the foundational stuff I said at the beginning, dudes. Um, don't look military, militaristic. It, that's not what you want to do. You want to blend, you know, put your do-rag on, put black on. Just blend in with the populace as best you can, especially if rioting ensues with no electricity in your urban setting. Um, yeah, seriously, you don't want to you know, profile yourself in any way. And with these preparations and with the mindset that you obviously will have, otherwise you would not be watching this video, what you're going to find is you're going to be a leader in your urban survival situation. Guys will look to you for organization and advice and they'll say what do we do and it's going to be you that's running the show assuming that emergency services is nowhere to be found or very important point coming remember this they're completely overwhelmed which could happen uh, and if that's it's the situation like i've discussed in some other videos like wrol don't hasten the day um, it's up to you to affect your rescue it's up to you to organize uh, search parties to help people it might have been an earthquake that just brought the buildings down and there could be hundreds if not thousands of people that are buried alive and maybe some of the stuff in your urban survival kit can save their life and are prolong it long enough for you know some heavy equipment gets there uh, maybe you're loaning them food with your 550 cord maybe you're making them food with your dehydrated supplies that you have uh, maybe you're administering water to someone who desperately needs it um, because you have a filtration capability, you have a storage capability in your USK, you can do that. Maybe everyone is completely in the dark of what the heck is going on. But since you're prepared with your radio, whatever variety you choose, uh, you save the day. You save the day. Um, this is nothing fancy. And I sincerely hope um, that this has helped. That it helps you think about urban survival situations in ways that you can prepare your own USK that will be effective for you, that your SAWC concerns uh, will be met, and for whatever room and capabilities you have, that if that day, like I always say, heaven for forbid, comes, that you'll have a measure of preparedness and you'll have a feeling of self-reliance that you 
can survive and you can live another day and go home to your friends and your family and hopefully help others, other people do the same. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for the support. I work my butt off for you guys. I think you know that. Uh, every spare minute I got that I can free up from family and career, I spend it on you. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. That fancy. USK out. <laughs>